so it was in the beginning. That's uh, Arthur's impression of Edward the First castle. So there was a castle here before, the Welsh castle, and apparently there was no community, but I bet you there were some people around the settlement around the base. And then <coughs> there is a date on one of the houses on Castle Street, 1119, but I don't know where they got that from, actually. Mm. Seems a bit too old for me. But on this map by Colin Gresham in his famous book about this area, these are the burgages laid out by Edward I, and one of them is called Chopper Groys. So it's number 11, which is uh, 12 around there, which is opposite the chip shop. So there was a shop there of some sort. <laughs> but the things they sold were very basic. I've got a list of some ideas candles, molasses, sugar, dried peas, flour, mm -hmm. butter, salt, cheese, very basic stuff, fish, sweets, and tobacco. And from the middle of the 19th century, tea. Mm -hmm. Seeds, Manchester goods, which was drapery stuff and haberdashery. Very basic shops. Okay, and then that's the 17th century. <coughs> and that's all the, what, that the town consisted of. Just around Castle Square, each side of the castle, down Castle Street. And there was a inn there, new inn where Castle Stores or the gallery is today. And uh, a couple of other shops. The market was in the square and down the hill to Abermadna, as the name suggests, by the lifeboat station to the Blue China. And that's shopping. In the Middle Ages, this one's dated 1642. Now, this is Castle Street. <coughs> that's number 8 and 10, I believe it, or not, where Shopper Grois was. My father was born in number eight, actually. But after, it was converted to a Victorian building. And you can see where it is, by that wall there. It's exactly the same. That's how it was, and that's how it was built in 18, rebuilt in 1899. There was other shops down the hill. In fact, there's loads of shops. There was the fish and chip shop opposite was always a fish shop. Next door, the little cottage down was a greengrocer's. The shop on the corner was Haberdash and <coughs> Roll, and then a sweet shop. And then, oops, before I get to the next shop, this is another look at the old town. You can see the old town there. This is looking down from the mass. See where the road forks there? That building there was called Tinamais which became the White Lion Hotel and then the Lion Hotel. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that's quite different. And down at Abermouth, now this is not a very good picture, not very clear. This is, this is the mill where, uh, oh, what's the name? I've forgotten the name now. Blue China? No, no, next to the Blue China. Mm -hmm. It's called the Hen Mary, actually. Mm -hmm. There, that's the mill. That house isn't there now. There's, before the pier was built, there was a rough pier. So there was a mill there. On the green, before the big houses were built there, they got knocked down, there was a storehouse and small cottages. And behind where this is taken from, there was a lime kiln. There was a penning smoking house around there too. So that was a sort of commercial area. Now, in 1807, the main road came through the Turnpike Road, and the centre of the town started moving up to the main road. These were the first ones built. I don't know if you can work out where it is. It's St. Daniels is to the right. So, that first bit was called Union Row at first. That building there is called, now it's now we call it the Hearn Avion because it was the original Avion stores. And Captain David Williams, who owned it 200 years ago, he had his own little ship called the Avion. And he used to bring these stores and stuff to the shop in Liverpool, Dublin, things like that. 
<coughs> this is looking completely the other way. There's the Bryn here. This is quite old. This is about 1870, this picture is. There's the Bryn here. That block of houses was built about 1860 something by Aleri the florist's great grandfather. And she's still there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see the Prince of Wales down there. And the gap, because there's no high street. It wasn't known as the high street. That was called Ormsby Terrace. The four <coughs> little houses across the road were called Glassbrin. No, sorry, Gwynbrin. Because it was owned by Sir Hugh Ellis and Annie Gwynbrin Estate. <coughs> Number one, Marine Crescent used to be a shop. And that was actually the sub post office which was moved there. There was everything down in the centre. I grew up here, number three. There was butchers, bakers, everything you could think of down there. This is Tilly Wint, one up from the Marine Hotel, where Sally was. And that is John Alec Jones, bootmaker. We're coming across him again. Today, that's <coughs> looking a bit further up. That's Tinnigwent 1, 2, Pendyke, which was demolished to build Castle Terrace. You can see across the road there, the bakery, what used to be the bakery. There's the stained glass window above the bakery, which you may have noticed. Beautiful, still there. Now that's a grand picture. I'm not quite sure this is, I got this off a lady who sent her grandmother took loads of uh, photographs before the First World War. I suspect it's Potterai, because there was a shop there for many years that sold everything. And she's got everything there, it's great. Everything from an elephant to a pin. That's what she said. Same as Alice. <coughs> There's a fish shop down the bottom of Castle Street. <coughs> which became Kudwalladers. Mm -hmm. That's one of my aunts there, Auntie Banshee, I think, and one of her cousins. But yes, it started off as a fishmonger's. The ice cream was the second, I think. Then, like I said, across the road from Kudwalladers on the corner, that was a shop. Oh, there's my Auntie Dolly. Mm -hmm. Look at the old milk churns. Made fresh every day. And this is where John Howard Jones moved to, to Howard View. And he was there, oh, well into Howard View, if I can remember everything. Like that. And the Pines nursing home was an ironmonger's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's really amazing, I didn't know that. And I, well, I knew there was an ironmonger's called Mona Stores around that area, but I couldn't work it out where it was until I found this photo. And it's actually where the pines are. Yes. Hmm. So there was three island shops. Now that's oh, outside the pines looking up. There's Liverpool House. That was a grocer's, general grocer's and wholesalers. That was the daughter of the Reverend Marx, who was the Congregationalist Minister. There is a sign above there, but I can't make out what it was. So that's another shop. <coughs> the corner of Mona Terrace, mm -hmm. was Swenny Dairy, oh, yeah. <coughs> and the various owners. And it's not, at the bottom there you can see the houses that used to be on the green. They got demolished in the storm. But that's literally mm -hmm. 20 yards outside here. Mm -hmm. Here it is on the corner there. Yeah. <coughs> here you go. Tea. In advance. <laughs> I don't know what the date of this. This is Evans River was running to any day then. Well, that's quite a long time ago, I think that. Now we're up to the high, to the high street. That's mm -hmm. London House, which is now an antique shop on the corner going down to the station. Mm -hmm. uh, the first occupier was Mr. R.T. Pritchard. I am under a saddler, and then we moved down to Sheffield House. Mr. Howard, I remember, 
and his daughters that ran it. There's a bookshop, wasn't there? Bookshop, art supplies. He, he was actually a photographer himself, Mr. Howell. <coughs> he took many good photographs of Alan Cricket and made them into postcards to sell. Have you got yeah. about the date of this one? About the 19th. Uh, well, there's a clue there because there's flags everywhere. <coughs> So I think it's the Jubilee 1936, was it? Jubilee. Oh, of, yeah. yeah, so that's a clue there, the flag in the window. There you go, I've got quite a good collection of guidebooks which contain lots of uh, adverts which are a good clue. So that's, uh, this is from the 30s, I think. So you can see what he, he sold everything, it was a great little shop. This one, which is not very good one again, was further down the packet terrace, to past the, station, the castle pub towards the station. There was a hairdresser's, I think, in my time, but it was a shoemaker at one time. Now we're back up to the high street. The shop on the left there, the four, the four at the end here were built later than the rest, so the numbering all changed around. It was very confusing when we were trying to work it out. But the first occupier was Matthew Roberts, who was a printer and stationer, who originally was in Castle Square. You know, next to the gallery, there's a little door there, a double door, where you see Mervyn behind doing the framing. I think that was the printing place. But then he moved up to here, and then when he died, it went to his son-in-law, Mr. Litherland, and the printing business went to David Trevor Roberts. And we bought it from him. Wh which one? The press? Yes. Oh, and when we moved in, there was not a bulb in the place. Where? Well, this house, yeah. In the place. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, take it with you. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cakes also. <laughs> and then the uh, post office was built in 1910. And uh, the big house on the corner, when it was first built, it was called Press Wilbur, and it was a doctor's surgery. They had a, a bit of a nursing home there too. They had it's changed a, a lot, home. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was called Moore Elliot one time, yeah. which is confusing. Mm -hmm. And I can remember there was a barber's in there. <coughs> That's the thing, the shops change so many times, it's so difficult. People start in one little shop, and if they prosper, they move to a bigger shop. You see, or they close down, or some shops last for generations. <coughs> so there's, it's very complicated. It's, it's easier to find the old history from the censuses and the guidebooks than the modern history. And because if you ask someone in living memory, you get conflicting or contrary, uh, uh, you know, suggestions. Oh no, that was 43. No, it was 45. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, he was there, then he was a jeweler. No, no, he moved there. Oh, no. <coughs> That's nuts. And the other thing that you'll see <coughs> further down is shops and businesses retained the previous name, or even the one before that. And the modern example is we still call Chem's shop the spa. Well, it's not the spa. Mm -hmm. We still call the petrol station Londis. Well, it's not, it's the Premier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But they keep the old name in sort of uh, common usage. It's not a very good picture, this, but this is uh, where Christine's shoe shop is. It was Hamelock Jones, Draper's shop. And uh, that family, Hamelock stores, moved from two different places. Hamelock was actually the name of a ship. His, his grandfather was captain of the Eric Power. His grandfather was captain of a ship called the Havelock. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there you go, West End drapery stores. Check your corsets and liberty bodices. <laughs> right, this is the big, it's now a house. Uh, that was Dio Price, Dio Price's father was look at the staff, there's milliners, seamstresses, all sorts. And it was also the post office for 50 years. Before the present post office was built, 
At this stage, when this photo was taken, the post office has moved to half of what a lot of us call, still call the Orange Tub, because it was the Orange Tub Cafe for many years. And you can see there the telegraph boy. <coughs> and then there's the same looking from a different direction. Draper, milliner, costumier, special, specialities in Welsh woolen shawls, a large assortment of boots and shoes, funerals completely furnished. All sorts. <laughs> 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 And then, of course, uh, in recent memory, that was Mr. Chase, the dentist, next door. That is the George Hotel, how it originally was. It was built about 1820. And actually, in a sense, it is called George IV, not just the George, in the early census. So one assumes it was named after he came to the throne. <coughs> and then... Uh, Oh, that's very soon after it was built, about eight, rebuilt, about 1895. And uh, there was, there's one more wing today. So at some stage, I think during the 1920s, another wing was added to it. Every shop had an errand boy. That's all Mr. Owen Pritchard, now Pritchard. Good. Good. Central meat stores, that was where Unearth is today. And there we are, looking down the street. There's the archway at the Brin, which I assume these sheep are heading for. In the courtyard there, there's, it's now being converted, I notice, into nice little chalets or houses, but they were all stables and Thing, and there used to be stockades where the new car park is. Yeah. There used to be stockades there on the platform for loading them onto the trains. <coughs> so, oil lights, so there was no gas in cricket. And we move further down the high street. <coughs> what have we got here? That's okay, that's yeah. Larry's shop. Yeah. Although it says Hills there, the Larry's family always lived above it, but they rented the shop out to start with. And this next door was Machiad Beckus, was uh, Margaret Rowland's baker and confectioner, well, confectioner, whose family were the starters of Station Bakery. <coughs> there we got Peter Bridget, Sheffield House, Sadler, then Ironmonger. You can't really see much further down. You can see central buildings, which was DJ Williams, Dudley Glynn's father, who actually started here in the uh, <coughs> leather shop for about five years and then moved to central buildings as well. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. <coughs> There's another view of the, what I call Ormsby Terrace. From uh, uh, what what they call this place now, May's Chinese restaurant there was Granville's mm -hmm. stores. <coughs> in, at this in this photo is a jewelers. Mm -hmm. MJ, I can zoom in on this one quite clear. Okay, MJ Thomas, mm -hmm. yeah, jewelers, and also Temperance Hotel. There was three or four Temperance Hotel. Very serious people. This is Jones and Richards, who's a confectioner. Now, where the chemist is, with a house, because these all started off just as houses originally, and slowly they were converted to shops. I don't know who's in the very shop there, but there's a barber's pole outside. Well, there was a barber. A lot of them, they sold sweets and tobacco and had a barber's around the back, like Pikes in Port Maddox. There was a, he, he was a barber as well. And you went right through the shop and went, here, okay. Here, <coughs> 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 Next door there, 
uh, as she told us, is the alleyway down to the car park. That was butchers in my time. But in the 1950s, it was jewelers. Uh, the two Albert Jones, Norman Jones' his father, and then the policeman retired from the police and oh, carried on as a jeweler's shop. And then it was a butcher's. <coughs> That's the only <laughs> picture I've got of David Lynn's shop. It was taken during the war, and all he had to sell was potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> potatoes, potatoes, and potatoes for dinner. There's Sheffield House, Wendell's father, there, keep the picture. And um, you can see, in this case, it's part of a shop, but earlier pictures taken of the same view, that's a bank. That part of the shop is, where the boutique is now. And then next door to it, which, were, which is the fishing tackle shop, was Bristol House, which was various things. It was a cafe for a long time, apparently. Before that, there was a shoemaker there, and also a uh, ship owner. Mary's kind of great grandfather. The yeah. other half I saw, where uh, Andy's art gallery is now, the Avion. Because remember, I told you at the beginning, it started off down at the bottom of the high streets, opposite Newsday. And then that family became very prosperous and built this side of the high street. And originally the Avion, the new Avion hardware store, extended right to the corner, but they made a deal with Midland Bank, who originally were opposite, next to Roots, and they moved across the road to the location, last location of the bank. There was something, I, I don't think it was law, but banks always seem to be built on corners. Whether it's policy, <coughs> I don't know. But when you think about it, every bank you can think of is on a corner or stand alone. <coughs> so that was for many years the middle bank. Wow. And then we're across the road now, more corset shops. <coughs> this was 46 High Street, which I told you it was built by Captain Owen Jones of the Havelock, so it's called Havelock House for about three years. And then he sold it to the Jonathan family, and it was renamed the Beehive. They uh, had it for quite a few years, <coughs> and they sold it to the Star Supply Company. And the prices are good, all in pennies, you know, eight pence, six pence, four pence, that's all pennies. And I'll, sh I'll show you where how it developed. That's it in the 1930s. That's Megan Williams, who's still managed to rest there when I was the Aaron boy. I don't know who that is or that is. That's Robin Sarr, Mamie Moncrief's type. And that's my Uncle Daddy, which ended up making the ice cream. So that's a good picture. Prices are going up a bit here in the windows. This one is 40, I've forgotten. Eight houses, I think. Anyway, you'll see where it is in a minute. And that's, uh, you see, the original owner was Hills, Stanley Stores, and then I think this is his son in law, David Charles Davis, the present David Charles's type. And they look very impressive with their top hat, <laughs> giving out samples of tea. And here's the surprise. Where, what's there today? Igamogam. <laughs> <laughs> the intention is part of this project, the unique streets, is that all these pictures, we take a modern picture, trying to get it from the same angle, 
with the people outside doing the same pose, but these are showing off a bit, I think, <laughs> <coughs> and put them side by side in display panels. Before it was the Stanley stores, it was called Daniel House, run by <coughs> Daniel Bowen. Now this family had three or four shops in town. They also had medical hall. One of them moved to where Castle Stores was, the gallery by the castle. And another one of them, or I get mixed up with them, had Marine Post Office for a while. That is Pew Jones, new shop. Now Roots, uh, the Christian bookshop. So that's a grand picture. Quite expensive tea there. You see, he calls himself an Italian warehouse man. They like to give themselves big names. Yeah. So th that meant he sold, remember that list I said at the beginning of items? Well, this means he sold more exotic stuff, like salami, olives. And it was always good fun looking in the window. Things like shark fin soup and <coughs> all sorts of things. So, and there's Yeah Yan there in his youth. Look at the tins. Everything was out on show. This bit shows how different shopping is today than how it used to be. Now, this was a mystery photograph I got. I couldn't work it out at all. I could see there's electrical goods there. And I know who I got it from it was a clue. It was Jack Burnell's family. So I knew he was an electrician and a plumber. And then I did some investigation. And look, it's the same. It's Ann Wen's shop next, next door to shop <coughs> I'll have to get a picture of Anne standing like that. Isn't it? <coughs> yeah, that was a good bit of detective work. Uh, I suppose for bringing the big fridges and cookers and things in. And made a lamp. There, looking down the high streets, you see there's Medical Hall, good old Medical Hall. That's when it was run by the Bowens, I think. And then, of course, the Davis Hills family had it for many years. There you go, fix anything. <laughs> he sold them all over the world. Fix everything. The arrangements of the digestive organs and everything. <laughs> Torpid action of the liver. I won't go into it, it gets a bit weird right like, yeah, yeah. And then these Pills speedily remove the irritation and feverish state of the stomach and prom promote a due and healthy decretion of bile. <laughs> <laughs> so. <coughs> now, we're on the other way, the Prince of Wales on the right there. That part of it, we're still going through that door, but the bit to the left used to be the front parlour of the living area, right? if you remember, playing with the son of the landlord. <coughs> but it's all merged into one. Right? And that's my great, great grandfather was the first landlord there in the 1840s. <coughs> and we can see another barber's pole there. That's been a news agent for many, many years since the turn of the last century. Now opposite here, Remember me saying that was the first Avion store? Then the same family built next door, which was called Manchester House, and the brother of Captain Williams ran that, and that was a Draper's store. And then it was eventually sold to Barclays Bank, <coughs> and it became Barclays Bank. I can't see anything else down there. <coughs> That's standing in the same place, but turn left, looking up the hill towards St. Catherine's, there's Manchester House, you see. There's the community, the family church. These are the two cottages that were there that were demolished to build the memorial hall. 
called Sandman. That was a funny little shop. I don't know if it was connected with Manchester House, if, if he was a tailor. He probably did the work for the draper's shop. Yeah. <coughs> what was the Hay and Avion was sold to David Davis, another captain, sea captain, whose son was a plumber, Margaret P. Sowens Barrow. Um, he sold all sorts of uh, sanitary ware, you know, sinks and toilets, so it was called Stafford House, because from the pottery, you see. He said they gave themselves fancy names. This bill is interesting because the date is 1928, and 1927 is when the mains uh, grid electricity came to cricket. And this is for wiring, not rewiring wiring the house in cricket from scratch and it was 16 pounds two and tuppence <laughs> now across the road again here we go he goes this is a complicated one this is where the spa is but it's not now called the spa mm. which we call the spa or the mace even here it's Ellis's store, that's uh, another relative of mine actually. Uh, I forgot the one where Ellis it was. Yeah. It was Catherine Ellis back of our family. And then, there it is, you see, it became Harrison Jones. <laughs> and there's inside, now this is my favourite place. <laughs> this is actually two pictures stitched together. But look at the thing there, isn't that so different to today? Yeah. Look at that cheese. It's monstrous. <laughs> <coughs> and everything you could think of, all the biscuits, everything in tins, the tea in those canisters, you sort of make your own mix and everything. And then it was owned by Hill Williams, but he still kept the previous name. You see, this is this is how they did it to maintain the goodwill, I suppose, or people remember the thing. But if you look at this, this is in the 60s. And if you think of the previous picture with all the things on display, he's now got a cash out desk. <coughs> he's trying to compete with Quicksave that just opened in Port Maddox. So all the shops, shop near with, shops down at Fed Road, they all got checkout debt tills and you helped yourself. The new shop even had a little mini market around the back, uh, what was it called? Arbeda. Arbeda, that's right, yeah. And it was a real, before shopping all changed, you know, last fight against supermarkets and things like that. And things changed, and then they didn't have Aaron Boys, nobody delivered anything. <coughs> there you go. Here's my model for tonight. <laughs> Everything was wrapped up in little parcels. Yeah. Fish and chips came in newspaper. Tea came in bags. These were nice little parcels all wrapped up neatly with a bit of string. They had a tin with a ball of string in and a hole. They could pull the string out and broke it. And then now today, look at it. One in Samas. That is still a butcher's. That one hasn't changed. It was Newell's Butchers. This one, I remember this is a sweet shop. And there's another barber's pole there. Mm -hmm. That was Jack Bowie, Henry Bowie's uncle. This is mainly in the hairdresser's place now. And that's a nine, I think. But it was various things. It was. Uh, her great aunt ran it as a fish and chip shop during the First World War. Then it became the generals, grocers and tobacconists. And then when uh, they retired, Evan the Butcher had it for a short while before moving up the street. Where we got? Oh, we're going up Carnarvon Hill now. There's Sam Baker, where the bakehouse is today. There used to be a shop below it, general sweet shop. 
And then here's a good one. That's Bram Rill. That used to be a general store and grocers. That was, you see the same families could keep coming in. That was Hilary's great aunt. And then they moved down to where she is today. That was originally called Snowden View. And I think, oh, I've come to the end of the shops. Who remembers him? Harry Cross from the fair. Because <coughs> I'm finishing the shops, I'm on the fair now. <coughs> because the other way of shopping, when the fair came twice a year, in recent times, which was more often in the past, <coughs> all the housewives that did bed and breakfast bought their crockery and linen on fair day. So old Harry Cross was a great uh, salesman. He used to juggle the plates. 